troisième écrivain que nous allons entendre ce soir est Stuart Dishel. C'est un poète américain. Il est l'auteur de six recueils de poésie, dont Good Hope Road, a National Poetry Series Selection, and The Lookout Man, qui vient tout juste d'être publié. Ses poèmes ont été publiés dans des revues importantes telles que The Atlantic, Agni, The New Republic, Slate, Canyon Review, Plowshares, et dans de nombreuses anthologies nationales et internationales. Il a reçu les prix du National Endowment for the Arts de l'État de Caroline du Nord et de la John Simon Guggenheim Foundation. Il est professeur distingué du programme Master of Fine Arts Program in Creative Writing de l'Université de Greensboro dans l'État de Caroline du Nord aux États-Unis. Et puis j'aimerais citer une autre poétesse, ancienne résidente, ici au Château de la Vigny, Hélène Hinzi, qui a écrit sur Stuart ceci. « Dichel est l'héritier américain des poètes européens Schimborska et Tranströmer, tous deux prix Nobel. Avec son esprit, son humour, son scepticisme plein d'affection et son sens du tragique omniprésent. » Bonjour, bonsoir, mesdames et messieurs. For me, it is always a difficulty because when I say bonjour at this time of the day, someone says bonsoir. And when I say bonsoir, they repeat to me bonjour. <laughs> I want to first thank uh, the foundation, uh, Let It Grow, for inviting me here again uh, to this remarkable place and for, to Sophie for her millions of kindnesses, incandescence, brilliance, and talent. Um, I also want to say that although I did not write these poems during my last residency here, I was inspired by the residency and as you will see many of the poems derive from my time here, uh, as well as this photograph taken by my friend Leland Stewart, which took place just over there. Mm -hmm. Lines on a train to the Alps. Outwitted again by the machinery of life, I did, it did not occur to me I would be seated backwards on the train where I would watch blurred cities recede, how on this day I would travel in the wrong direction, forever departing, saying farewell to high-rise and spire, smokestack and towers. The farmers in the field had already done their work when I passed. All was conclusion, nothing beginning until I arrived in Lausanne and turned around. <laughs> This next poem uh, is somewhat inspired by Julian James' book, uh, The Origins of Consciousness and Development of the Bicameral Brain. <clears throat> Lines about the snow. The first snow fell before the first word. No name could be given for it or rain, or wind, or fields with their winter colors. No name for cold, or clouds, or sun, or even the sky. But snow was different. Once it fell, it appeared to stay forever. And the nameless world was cold for a long time, until the melting brought the creatures from deep in caves out into the light. Once silent, I feared them, then screamed the first word. Tiger. <laughs> Lines about mountains. I just learned that mountains kill more people climbing down them than making their brave ascent, and that some have the oldest rocks on the earth. Small wonder <laughs> they crumble from avalanche, avalanche, having weathered eons to fall. Mountains must get tired with so many people climbing them and bored with the endless boot prints of alpinists in bright gear, the flagpoles jammed into crags, a piton and foothold, the kick of the crampon, metal ladders across crevasses. More climbers die each summer on Mont Blanc than all the Himalayas, its summit not as perilous, but more frequented than Everest or K2. I conclude, 
The nearest mountain is far more dangerous than the distant one, just as we are more likely to be killed by the hands of someone we love. Lines about the river, then the sea. I don't like to swim in rivers. Their lengths and bends trouble me. If my chest touched against river weeds, I would panic. No, I don't like to swim in rivers, but I admire them for being relentless. Even blind rivers buried under cities or rivers that run just a few days a year. Some rivers create borders between states and nations. Some rivers stray from their courses or are dammed from flowing to neighbors. I very much like the word estuary and the thought of boats at low tide there. And I appreciate how a river divides Pest from Buddha, Minneapolis from St. Paul, or the banks someone decided or left and right. A current is like a river in the sea. When I was small, I lived along the beach. When I got caught in a riptide, a passing wave brought me home. The Foreigner. It is snowing in a city where it almost always snows under the arcade, some distant version of myself. My grandfather broke, but dressed in a modern suit in a hat and long coat holds an umbrella. A man of the early 20th century, he has not yet learned to smile for pictures. He asks in your language if he might have one of your cigarettes, and you give him two. He wants to place the extra one you gave him in the silver case in his pocket I have kept safe. But for now you take a cigarette yourself and he lights it for you with a match he has kept dry in his long coat pocket. Neither of you wants to step out again into the snow. He thanks you once more and it makes you feel good about yourself, even if you have done terrible things to others that day. I think we all have an impossible friend, and uh, mine was a fellow named uh, Hubert Demeret, who uh, died in 2017. Not all men who wear red pants could get away with saying the things he said and not get punched. Once we nearly hit each other, but we shoved instead, and I said, Fais pas chier! Don't make shit! And he told me, Don't even try to speak a little French with me. You have no past or future tense. <laughs> and poked a finger in my chest. And Dominique told us to stop and Chantal locked the door to the bar, and no one could believe my behavior because they thought I was reasonable. <laughs> what a mistake! I had the worst headache for forever and woke at dawn to walk the periphery of the city for 24 kilometers for an article I was writing, and I didn't contact him till months later. And we never spoke of our quarrel, what it was about, I cannot recall, but something I did offended his manners. We were people who believed grown-ups should not wear sport jackets in the evening in a big city and never sandals on a Saturday night. We were divorced and, ra and missed our dead fathers. I should have given him air kisses or real ones on both sides of his unshaven face, but he spared me that custom. My good friend, the most French Frenchman I ever knew, we shook hands like Americans. <laughs> and finally, the Enchanted Bells. 
He bought them at the flea market while she sifted through the brocante for treasures to bring back on the plane and post on her homepage. He noticed four bells made of brass without a score or provenance of country or origin. She would later say India when he said Spain, etched upon their lips. When he picked them up off the vendor's table, four bells arranged separately, perhaps haphazardly, amid keys and hand tools, pocket knives, medallions and doorknobs, all things old and metal, pulled from bones, stacked beside a white panel truck, four bells with tags of different prices dangling from each of their stems, four bells like bosk pears, fat around their bottoms, bought for a price he knew the vendor would accept. For all, he said, for the bells of brass so cheap, he did not even ring them, these of which belonged as a set, the fourth the smallest, alike in shape and similar in design, but not pattern. Four bells the vendor wrapped in newspaper and, and wiped the smudges of ink on their, her apron. My woman became lost, he practiced, walking back and forth among the tables until he saw her arms full of bracelets and her neck adorned with vintage chains. She was cross with him for having left her without a translator for her goods. Back in the hotel, while she bathed, he tested the timber of the bells the vendor had wrapped for him. The headlines were no better than the ones at home. Things just looked better for him in another language. Then he tried the bells, starting large to small, then back again. Such bright notes issuing like songbirds from their throats. He found when he chimed them, they peeled even rounder, and like a lookout man, he was tempted to cry out the time in four directions. When she stepped out of the bathroom, he thought she was going to tell him off again. Instead, she dropped her towel and kissed him with her tongue. Thank you.